off away and racing with the very latest edition of Festival Focus. I'm Tom Lee and as ever uh, joined by my trusty sidekick David Mullins as we sift through uh, what we believe have been the potential eye-catching performances with a view to uh, perhaps uh, what might unravel weeks from now in the big spring festivals. We're only a fortnight or so away from Cheltenham and a few names who might or might not be appearing and making an impact uh, kick off. Well, we're going to go back to last Tuesday at Market Raisin. Uh, Katira, a mayor who's now three from three over hurdles, David, after this comfortable success at Market Raspberry, as the great John McCrick used to call it, after which uh, the layers will now mainly give you Katira 12 to 1 for the mayor's novices hurdle. Uh, you can get a little bit of uh, 16 to 1 if you shop about. Uh, we discussed Katera after one of her previous wins. Are you now any more impressed in a festival context? I think it's worth noting that by their very high standards, uh, the Skelton brothers have been quiet enough of late, uh, but Katera flying the flag. Yeah, I, I'm still impressed by her, Tom, but it's two and a half weeks from Cheltenham. She's a mayor's novice. Um, do you know, it's it's... It's quite soon to be running her back in Cheltenham. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm not questioning Dan Skelton's training abilities or anything like that. But, you know, if you really did fancy her, I don't think you'd be taking that chance by running her in market raising. Um, we talked about her before and I was very impressed with her and I thought she had a great shout going. I just wonder, do the Skeltons think? Um, I think she has a great chance, as you say. Mm -hmm. They've been relatively quiet about her. So um, that is a small bit of a concern for me. Anything we're going to be talking about now that's ran in the last week or 10 days it's um it's getting close to Cheltenham if you really fancy them. well further down the list there's a horse who to my eyes at least had a very hard race at Kempton on Saturday uh we'll come to him uh but further back is last Wednesday at Punchestown where actually with this excerpt uh you get two for the price of one uh the reason being um last year's runner up in the mayor's hurdle Queen's Brook is now between eight and ten to one for this year's mayor's hurdle after she won the grade three at Punchestown, uh, named in honour of one of the all-time greats, Quivega, the Quivega Mayor's Hurdle. So Queensbrook was the winner. Um, I think it's worth noting a couple of points here. She did have race fitness on her side because this was her fourth run of the season. And she was in receipt of nine pounds from the eventual third at Punchestown. Uh, that's a filly called Brandy Love, uh, who we haven't seen since way back last April when she decisively won a grade one at Fairy House. So I think you're probably going to tell me, David, that both of them, Queensbrook and Brandy Love, are due some credit. I thought what was intriguing, as I've already mentioned, Queensbrook is now between eight and ten to one for the Mayor's Hurdle at Cheltenham. Uh, Brandy Love was initially pushed out to seven to one. Now she's tightened back up to six to one. Uh, did one or other, or maybe both, do enough in your eyes to suggest they could bustle up the likes of Honeysuckle, um, certainly Epitont, or indeed even, and of course there's this recurring theme that she might go for the stayers, uh, Marie's Rock, in what, imagine if they all turn up, it has the potential to be dynamite, that mare's hurdle, with the likes of Queensbrook, Brandy Love, and the other three names. What about those two? Yeah, Queensbrook and Brandy Love, I... I, I'm a bit. I went back and watched the replay again because I couldn't understand how people were impressed with Brandy Love. She travelled up well, to be fair, and we knew she was going to give a blow. But we've seen the likes of Annie Power and and um them good mares getting through, um without a run, and uh, um they needed it too. I I wasn't impressed with her from the back of the last home. I know she jumped left as she always does. As she we went to the line with, for me visually, I thought her legs were tied together. Um, it didn't look didn't look sound or great to me. I just wasn't impressed with it. Just to be Queen, absolutely clear, this is Brandy Love we're talking about now. Brandy Love, yeah. I thought she went to the line with her legs legs tied up and Queen's Brook. I think she was just she was just picking up a race. I I'm not I know she was second in it last year, but she's very hard to catch on a on a day. Uh you don't really know what you're gonna get with her. Gordon says she's very hard to get fit. Maybe that's uh maybe that's the reason. I'm I'm not I'm not a fan of either of those going for the mayor's hurdle. I think it's a, I think it's a much deeper race this year. It probably is going to be the race of the festival if they all showed up. Um, but no, I'd be I'd be sticking with the favourite honeysuckle. 
Intriguing. All right, move swiftly on. 72 hours later, Kempton Park Saturday, uh, an Irish raider traveling to England was a horse called Nusret. Um, well and truly, I think it's fair to say Nusret, uh, put in his place earlier in the season by the likes of Blood Destiny and Lossy Mouth. Uh, but nonetheless, Joseph O'Brien's horse Nusret, now two from four over hurdles, uh, doing it really quite nicely in the grade two Adonis juvenile hurdle. And you'd have to say it was pure justification for sending him from Kilkenny all the way to Kempton. And he was his trainer's only runner on the card, Joseph O'Brien, sending Nosret over uh, solo. Uh, cut for the Boodles Juvenile Handicap Hurdle, the old friend Fred Winter off the back of this. Uh, he's now between five and seven to one. In your mind, this Nosret, is he shaping up to be the right type of material for that assignment, the Fred Winter Nosret? I wouldn't have thought so. I I, I actually fancied Nus, um, Perseus Way for the Boodles as we talked about it on one of the other shows. Mm -hmm. um, but it just shows the, the difference between Irish and English form. I know Perseus Way kind of kicked the last or two hurdles out of it and Nusret came with a wet sail down the outside. But um, for me, I don't think they're, I don't think they're anywhere in stable stars and I know they're going for the Boodles and not the Triumph. But um, just the way Blood Destiny kicked him out of the way in, in Fairy House, I'd just be a little bit worried about the strength and depth of the English form for the for the juvenile hurdles this year. All right. Well, stick with Kempton on Saturday because there was a very entertaining tussle up the home straight. Uh, the Coral Trophy handicap chase was eventually won by an improver called Our Power, who's now four from eight over fences after he eventually managed to get on top in that scrap with Phlegmatic. A um, couple of quotes flying about for the eight-year-old Our Power. Um, first of all, and we'll deal with this in isolation, for Cheltenham Festival's Ultima handicap chase, uh, he's between 10 and 16 to 1 for the Ultima. Um, don't forget he was fifth in that same race 12 months ago. But, and here's the key question, you touched on this with Katira, uh, it was a good old tussle between those two little more than a fortnight to recuperate from was what was quite a battle. Um, would he be ultimate bound in your eyes? And quite frankly, is that enough rest and relaxation to get him back to the boil and try and make it five from nine over fences for our power? Yeah, he was good. It's very hard to get by uh, phlegmatic of, of the skeletons in, in Kempton. Um, Listen, he done it well, but am I going to am I going to want to have him for the Ultima? It's a very competitive race always, and I think if you're going to try and win the Ultima, I don't think you want to be winning three weeks before and getting a penalty for it. Um, that's my opinion on it. I um I don't see it. I think I think there's I think there's better ways of going winning races in Cheltenham than uh, being bottomed out three weeks before in Kempton. Interesting, interesting. Um, mindful also that. This has been observed a time or two. Uh, once upon a time, not very long ago, uh, you won the Grand National. Might our power be a Grand National winner as well? I know it's a few weeks off, admittedly. He's generally 25 to 1, uh, this improving eight-year-old for entry. He's number 62 on the list, so he'd need a few to come out. Uh, but with your knowledge and expertise, does this young horse look as if he might be an entry sort, an entry type, a Grand National hero, potentially? Yeah, I think he is. I think um we've talked about the Grand National a few times and horses that could possibly go for it. He'd be one I'd be skipping Cheltenham with and going and hoping that he'd get in. I know he he needs, I think, twenty two horses to come out for him to get in. But um if I owned him, I'd be taking that chance. Intriguing. Intriguing. Might it be Aintree in a few weeks' time for our power? Um the one horse I'm really intrigued and excited to ask you about uh ran not at Kempton on Saturday, but at Chepstow. Uh, winner number 65 of what's been a really productive season uh, so far for trainer David Pipe uh, was the grey, only a six-year-old. Uh, thanks for the help, uh, who, let's not forget, first time cheek pieces, first run since a wind operation, and his first try at a trip approaching three miles. And he won this per temps qualifier at Chepstow, frankly, as if he'd just joined in. It looked as if they'd let him loose at the two furlong pole because the rest were lagging behind. And thanks for the help, was just bounding round like a fresh horse. Um, the handicapper is going to give him a fair old shove northbound for this because, frankly, how couldn't they? Uh, he won this easy peasy off 117. 
Uh, could he, David Mullins, thanks for the help, uh, be one for the per temps itself? The bookies certainly think so because he's now only six to one, the grey. Yeah, thanks for the help. He was visibly very impressive. Mm. That race can fall apart a bit. I rode in it one year for Gordon with jury duty. He needed the run badly, actually. Um, and, he, and he went on to finish second or third in it, I think, behind uh, presenting Percy. But um, thanks for the help. Got beat and punches having off 109. And they're saying cheek pieces and the wind job has made the difference. So 109, he's going to need to run. <clears throat> if he gets 14 or 15 pound, he's going to need... He's going to need to improve the guts of forty pound for a win job and cheek pieces. I don't really see it, um, but you'd have to in the colours he's in. You have to take note, and he was very good. But um, for me, I, I, uh, it wouldn't be my money at them prices. But uh, I think that's too much of improvement for um, for a win job and cheek pieces for me. I love it when you're in a contrary mood and almost nothing that goes past you gets any sort of encouragement whatsoever. Uh, we'll go to the well once more, folks, because there is one more name on the list. Uh, it's a performance from Nace on Sunday. Uh, you talk about horses running in particular colours for particular stables. Well, the deadly duo at it again. Uh, owner Paul Byrne, trainer Emmett Mullins, uh, did the job with a new recruit to the Mullins, Emmett Mullins stable, uh, Corbett's Cross at Nace on Sunday, uh, who got up to beat Founder 50 by a head in the two-mile grade two, the Johnstown novice hurdle at Nace. Um, I thought this was intriguing on many levels because if you think that this horse's only festival entry is over a mile further in the Albert Bartlett, what a warm-up this was over just shy of two miles, not three. Uh, bear in mind, there are no stamina doubts because this horse won over three miles for Eugene O'Sullivan his former trainer who did really well with him uh, just last month and as well only a year ago uh, this Corbett's cross won a point to point over three miles uh, the bookies show him I think it's fair to say a lot of respect with a view to the Albert Bartlett uh, it's his only entry he's five to one joint favorite David alongside Embassy Gardens put quite simply are they correct to do so um, as we were saying with Katira and a few others that is possibly getting a bit close to Cheltenham. Mm. This guy, I think his future is going to be over fences really more than anything. But um, he is a three-miler. He gets the trip well. So I think two-mile running him over that trip, it was nearly like a race course gallop for him, if you get me. I thought it was very shrewd by Paul and Emma to run him um, and get to pick up a grade two along the way with with um, with decent prize money. This horse, I don't really know where he fits in. Um, I, he beat a well-touted horse at Gardens, um, found a 50. So uh, it's it's wide open. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's going to get the three-mile Albert Bartlett trip. I think he could be more of an RSA horse for next mm -hmm. year than an Albert Bartlett slogger this year. Um, that's that's my opinion of him. I think he's going to be a very good horse and it was... It was a great fight by Paul Byrne. As we know, Emmett, Emmett Mullins goes out with Maxine O'Sullivan, Eugene's daughter. So um, uh, I know this horse was well talked about for a long time. And uh, yeah, Paul put up the readies and got him. So fair play, to, fair play to the four of them, really. Well, let's not also forget that it could be the Emmett Mullins show uh, in Kelso on Saturday because there is strong talk that he will be represented by McTeague, uh, another potential improver. Uh, on that card at Kelso on Saturday. Um, this is a bit like having opened all your presents on Christmas Day and not being even remotely impressed with any of them. I think I know where you're going to go by default, and I don't think it'll be Cheltenham. However, David Mullins' performance of the week on Festival Focus, this is our traditional sign-off. Uh, we will stick with it. Uh, will it be, won't it be, uh, Katera, Queensbrook, Brandy Love, uh, Nuzret, Our Power, Ultima, or Grand National indeed, uh, thanks for the help, or Corbett's Cross. Corbett's Cross from me. Three mile number two has to. Uh, it's a good job I'm not employed as a mind reader because I thought it was sure to be our power uh, for the Grand National. It is Corbett's Cross who gets the gong this week, folks. Uh, we'll be back next week in this space. We're drawing ever closer now to Cheltenham. It is just a couple of weeks away. Uh, if there are any loose ends to mop up from Kelso and the likes this weekend. Uh, we will, of course, report them. Thanks for being with us, as always. 
Uh, we will be back very soon. Good luck.